Today in this lecture we are going to discuss the analysis of cardiac output and venous return using the simultaneous cardiac output and venous return curve. We are going to discuss the cardiac output and venous return curves, the cardiac output curve and the venous return curves simultaneously. So far in our previous lectures we have discussed in detail the cardiac output curve, we have discussed the venous return curve, we have discussed we have discussed different factors that influence the cardiac output curve that shifts the cardiac output curve up, upwards and downwards. Similarly, we have discussed different factors which shifts the venous return curve or rotates the venous return curve outward and inward. Now, we are, we are going to plot both the curves together and determine the, the point at which at which there is the equilibrium point or at which the cardiac output is equal to venous return. Normally the cardiac output, the, normally in a human being, in a normal human, the cardiac output which is the amount of blood that is pumped by the heart every minute must be equal to the amount of blood that is returning to the heart every minute. For example, we have the heart over here. So the amount of blood pumped by the heart every minute, amount of blood pumped by the heart every minute must be equal to the amount of blood that is returning to the heart every minute. When we plot the cardiac output curve, we see that we have basically plotted the right atrial pressure on the x-axis and the cardiac output and the venous return on the y-axis. So in the cardiac output curve, we see that initially when the right atrial pressure is below zero, there is no venous return or when there is negative pressure in the right atrial pressure when there is negative pressure in the right atrium there is zero cardiac output but as the pressure builds up as the pressure builds up and blood starts returning to the heart there is slight increase in the uh, cardiac output there is increase in the cardiac output and similarly similarly at the pressure level of zero, when the right atrial pressure is zero, the venous return is maximum in a normal human being, in a normal person without any pathology or without any sympathetic or parasympathetic stimulation, the venous return, the maximum venous return in the normal human being is five liters per minute. Now, the right atrial pressure the right atrial pressure is zero and the venous return is five liters per minute. If the right atrial pressure starts increasing, the venous return will start decreasing. The right atrial pressure, the pressure at this point in the right atrium of the heart, if it starts increasing, the venous return will decrease. And we have discussed again and again that when the right atrial pressure reaches seven millimeter of mercury, 7 millimeter of mercury the venous return will have decreased to zero level so initially with the in the with the right atrial pressure the pressure here is when negative there is no cardiac output there is no cardiac output because blood cannot come back because with the negative pressure there is collapse of the vessels so blood cannot come here so when no blood is coming to the heart heart cannot pump any blood so as the pressure starts increasing as that pressure starts increasing the cardiac output the the blood starts coming to the heart so the heart also starts pumping the blood and the cardiac output starts increasing and the point and the point at which the cardiac output at which the, the point at which the cardiac output is equal to the venous return that point has been labeled as point A that point has been labeled as point A and it is known as the equilibrium this is the equilibrium point at this level at this level, the cardiac output is 5 liters per minute, the venous return is also 5, per, 5 liters per minute and the right atrial pressure is 0 millimeter of mercury. 
now if the right atrial pressure starts increasing above this level we see that the the cardiac output will start slightly increasing it will st start slightly increasing and then it will make a plateau if the right atrial if the venous return increases if it starts increasing initially if other factors remains the same if other factors remain the same with the increase with the increase in the right atrial pressure there will be an increase in the cardiac output more blood will be coming so the heart will be pumping more blood but the other thing is that after a point at this level there will be a plateau at this after this level after this level even with the increase in the right atrial pressure there will be no more increase in the cardiac output it is the plateau of the cardiac output and with the increasing right atrial pressure the venous return the amount of blood that is coming back to the heart to the right atrium it will start decreasing and the venous return will touch the zero point and the venous return will become zero so in a normal human being in a normal person without any sympathetic stimulation without any pathologies the point at which the cardiac output and venous return curve the cardiac output curve and the venous return curve the point at which they meet each other is known as in this figure the that uh, point has been denoted with uh, a and it is known as the equilibrium point at this point the right atrial pressure is the same for the cardiac output and the venous return after this after this point after this point if the right atrial pressure starts increasing cardiac output will initially start increasing but then it will make a plateau and the venous return will start decreasing but the most important thing is the most important thing is that the mean systemic filling pressure has been kept normal the mean systemic filling pressure has been kept normal or 7 so the pressure mean systemic filling pressure mean systemic filling pressure it is the pressure which is helping or pushing or forcing the blood move towards the right atrium so this force is basically pumping or pushing or forcing the blood towards the right atrium and this is normally 7 mm of mercury so when the pressure in the right atrium becomes 7 mm of mercury this pressure is not able to pump more blood into the right atrium against this pressure because both the pressures have become equal at this point so the venous return will become zero with when the right atrial pressure when the right atrial pressure has reached this point now these two graph these two curve the, the cardiac output curve and the venous return curve these two curve the red and the blue curve has been drawn for the mean systemic filling pressure of 7 now we are going to increase the mean systemic filling pressure what we do we will inject some fluid into the system we will inject volume or fluid into the body what the fluid is going to do it is going to increase the filling pressure because the blood vessels will get filled the blood vessel blood vessels will will get filled so the resistance will decrease and the filling will increase which is going to increase the mean systemic filling pressure and in this diagram we see that the mean systemic filling pressure after injecting the extra fluid or injecting the extra volume the mean systemic filling pressure has become 16 so when the mean systemic filling pressure has increased when the mean systemic filling pressure has increased instead of 7 it has now become 60 now the right atrial pressure has to increase up to this point up to 16 mm of mercury or the pressure in the right atrium has to become 16 mm of mercury only then only then the venous return only then the venous return will become zero so we see when the 
when extra fluid is injected into the body when extra fluid is injected into the body the venous return basically rotates upward and rightward it rotates upward and it rotates outward so this is the mean this is basically the venous return curve but this is not normal it this curve this curve is basically after injection or giving extra volume into the system which is basically increasing the mean systemic filling pressure this red and blue color graph is showing the the normal venous return curve the normal cardiac output curve and the normal mean systemic filling pressure and the normal right atrial pressure but this black color curve is showing the venous return curve when when the mean systemic filling pressure has been increased so it shows that now the cardiac output curve now the cardiac output curve and the venous return curve meet at another point they intersect each other at another point they intersect each other at another point and that point has been labeled as point b now now initially when they intersected each other with the normal mean systemic filling pressure at that point at that point the mean the right atrial pressure was zero but now when they are intersecting each other at another point we can determine the right atrial pressure at that exact point where they have intersected each other and we also see that by increasing the mean systemic filling pressure the venous return and the cardiac output both has increased initially they met each other at this point they met each other at this point now they are meeting each other at this point so we see that the cardiac output and venous return both have increased now that's all about the cardiac output and the venous return curve put simultaneously and it shows that when the normal cardiac output curve and the normal venous return curve are plotted together the point at which they meet together that is known as the equilibrium point at that point the cardiac output is equal to the venous return and at that point the right atrial pressure is zero and the mean systemic filling pressure must also be normal but if the mean systemic filling pressure is increased by putting extra fluid or extra volume into the system which basically decreases the resistance of the veins which basically decreases the resistance of the veins and increase the mean systemic filling pressure this venous return curve shifts outward and upward and they meet at another equilibrium point which is the point b and at that new point the cardiac output and the venous return both have increased from the lower level to a higher level from a lower level to a higher level so it shows it simply shows that by increasing the mean systemic filling pressure the cardiac output and the venous return can be increased that is something which we have discussed previously as well but here it has been shown with a simultaneous cardiac output and venous return curve thanks a lot for watching the video